water blew out from the end tank from during the burnout. But I am a student pilot for helicopters. Right now I'm gonna go up in the Sikorsky 76 C plus. Look at this, this is full blown peacock bass in a fish tank. Here at Shop Hellcat in Fort Myers, we got Drew and Zach. They're going to be hooking up the Hellcat. We're going to be doing a little bit of performance work tour this week. We have Drift Night next Friday. And uh, what do you guys think? Going to mess with the supercharger, at least a smaller pulley, and uh, get a good solid tune on it. That's our biggest thing. Is we want to see the health of it after we did the burnout. He said the data log looked pretty solid up until whichever line blew or whatever blew. Then it got hot really quick. So it was holding good temp up until then. But we're going to get it figured out, get the car turned up. It should be making about 800 real horsepower. Right now, these Hellcat stock make about 650. So quite a big jump in power. That's going to be perfect amount for what we need for drifting and burnouts. So you think the supercharger sounds fine? So far, so good. You know, you can kind of like put your hand on it. Usually the, the noise will come with the vibration that you can kind of feel around the snout area and on the wind. Like and honestly, the engine and the blower and everything seems really quiet. The loudest thing in the car is just an exhaust leak. Yeah, there's definitely an exhaust leak. I don't know if it's coming from the V-Land after the header or if it's an action. Because don't the header bolts tend to break on these? Or eh? Uh, Hard to say. Yeah. Well, there's some manufacturers that make some cheap-ass headers for these. Problems. Well, what I'm thinking is do zoomies have the headers, each individual cylinder pipe come out and come out right here. So we'd have the zoomies coming out right in front of the door. That would be hell, man. It would be so, yeah, it'd be so loud. It'd be so loud. All right, so this is a supercharger off of a Hellcat, isn't it? Yep, yep. so all of these are all Hellcat blowers. Yeah, tell me a little bit about this. So let me see the front of it. That is a 2.7, so that's off a of red eye, and you can tell the difference by how the pin bushing yeah. uh, is out. And then this is off a of 2.4, so this is off like your car, yep. and how it's pushed in. Basically, oh, I the see. difference is the rotors are just a little bit bigger, and that's why it pushes out the bearing plates. You said this is a 2.4 yeah. off of my car, and then this is 2.7 off, off of a red eye? Yeah, or a demon. Or a demon, same blower. Yeah, and so basically all they did is they made the uh, bearing plate thinner. Yeah. So then you could have a bigger rotor, and that's it. Okay. It's not really too much different. These don't like RPM. The 2.4s like RPM. We want RPM. Yes. We want to sit on that rev limiter. Absolutely. <laughs> So what's different on different on the red eye? Is there head difference or uh, there's just valves? little like uh, they say like they say there's a lot of differences, but there's really not. Yeah, it's like uh, springs. What else? Uh, oil passages. Yeah, yeah, but it has a little bit more aggressive cam in it. Yeah, not guys, terrible. Zach just bought a brand new red eye. It's 400 miles on it, and you're already dropping the motor out. Motor trans and it's getting a Magnuson 2650. That is awesome. Yeah. What are you Full going sense. for? Uh, and for horsepower and nitrous, yeah, nitrous. Uh, 1350. 1350, yeah, that'll be solid. So. And it's crazy, all you have to do is a pulley swap, tune, and what else to make 800 wheel horsepower on a stock Hellcat? Literally just Injectors, plugs and plugs, thermostat. It's really not upper. Wow, we've even done a uh, Hellcat that was a manual. No mm -hmm. injectors, no anything, just a pulley, and it made well over 800 and lives very happy at that point, too. Yeah, that's so cool. What about a th uh, throttle body? Are you have to do anything with that or not? Leave it alone. Not really. Um, they're not a restriction until you start to get over 800. You know, yeah. And then I recommend either pouring them or, or going to a larger. I'll grab you a bearing plate. Guys, Drew is the master uh, tuner for all things Hellcat and GTR. Yep. <laughs> GTR Evo. He showed me. He showed us his dyno, and he's like, "This is my baby." <laughs> This is where he does all of his uh, his science at. It's, it's an area he make, makes him happy. They've got a ton of blowers. You guys don't do any porting or anything like that. You just kind of rebuild them yeah, as like needed. Yeah, you can look. Like, uh, these are uh, bullet bearing plates, so these are completely aftermarket units. Yeah. You know, so um, you can see, like, you know, these are made to so split the air so the air comes in because all of the air through the throttle body goes right through this area. So what do you think about putting one of those... Uh, metal spiral things on my intake to spin the air before it goes in the supercharger i'm gonna say the rotors are gonna spin at plenty <laughs> <laughs> so i'm totally kidding about that by the way we remember getting those when you're when the you're tornado. like the call. tornado yeah. yeah when you're my like i got that shit and i was like what the are you thinking <laughs> yeah you're like 15 looking on ebay for parts for your truck and you see that you're like oh 
That that I can do. <laughs> okay, what what's the difference here? What so do we got? This is a 2.7 snout. Yep. So you see how the pins are more indented. And then on the 2.4, you can see they're oh, out farther. Oh yeah, for sure. And so, so what's the idea behind that? Do you know? Just the uh so you can fit the bigger rotors. Oh, yeah. That was of it. Course. And then this is a bearing plate off of a 2.4. Yep. And so yeah, I here. can't find the compare that to the billet plate. And so oh, you, can, yeah. you can see like the airfoils, you know, they're like Should we do one out. of those? Boop, boop, boop. If you, you want, can, to, if we want to. You won't you won't really see a difference until you push the car a little harder, at least in the boost department. I see. So because the, the bottleneck has a new enough air to present itself. I see. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So we're pretty much leaving the supercharger alone because uh they're saying it probably doesn't need to be rebuilt unless what the injectors are clicking or no no unless no. You, you hear it clicking in the you'll hear it clicking it starts, in the blower it sounds like an injector click i see and then it gets progressively worse if there's an issue so i mean the data log and when i watch the computer it shows normal boost levels right yeah, i mean looks fine how accurate is the computer that's on the dash Extremely. is it yeah. for boost but you said that uh the air to fuel gauge is quite off right yes. on the on the dash yeah, yeah guys hear this out so tell us about that there to fuel uh That's dash gauge yeah dodge uses a different type of a method to categorize your air fuel ratio so mm -hmm. what you see on the dash isn't the same as what you would see on the dyno i see you know so okay but it does report i don't know why dodge does that honestly it says 14.7 on the computer and you cruise it like 13.5 and mm -hmm. explain the uh neuro network yeah, the car uh, runs on machine learning. It's got an artificial, you know, neural network, and that's what controls the fueling in it. You know, and that's why people like can't make modifications to the car without it having a heart attack. Uh, but at the same point in time, it also does a lot of flexibility. Like if you put E85 directly into the car, the, the computer will start compensating so you can drive. Closed loop, right? Closed loop operates in closed loop from start to finish at wide open throttle. That's you know, awesome. If the car starts leaning out when you're at full throttle. It'll then it goes too far. It'll shut the car down. Keep yeah. You from blowing. That's that's why you're able to do a lot with these Hellcats and Mopars is because it's a closed loop system. You don't have to switch over to like a Holly or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah the socket at ECU is just very advanced. No one really changes out the ECU. Mm -hmm. um, it's just more the like old school guys that have picked up the cars and yeah. they want to put like a TH400 in it. But yeah. really the stock ECU is yeah. more than adequate. As I'm editing this video, there's a few key things that I want to tell you all about. There's been a ton of comments about asking what I paid for the car. So I'm just going to tell you guys straight up, I paid 30 grand for it. It's got 175,000 miles with three minor accidents and a one owner car. Is it a lot of car and power for the money? I think so. However, could I also build something that's way faster and burn out, you know, drift, whatever for 30 grand? There's no doubt about it. However, I wanted to show a lot of love to my Mopar family because I've always driven Rams, I daily a 12 valve, I love Hellcats, and I was going to initially Hellcat swap my Fox body, but then this deal came up and it's just about the same price as buying a full Hellcat turnkey pallet kit from my Cleveland Power and Performance, which those guys have some pretty awesome products. You should check out their website. I'll include it in the description below. But to talk about a little bit of the performance mods we'll be making to the car, we're gonna do a thousand CC injectors. We're doing an Innovators West 12% over crank pulley. We're doing a 270 supercharger pulley, hotter thermostat, change out the supercharger bearing so that it runs a little bit more smoother, and we're also going to do a dyno tune. We're shooting for about 800 wheel horsepower. I think that's going to be plenty for what we need, and we have plenty of room to turn it up and mess with it in the future. So let's get to some helicopter content, and then there's going to be a recap from the guys down at Shop Hellcat showing you what they've found over the past few days. It's some pretty cool stuff. A lot of minor maintenance and I'm super pumped for drift night to tear that thing up. I've talked about it in a couple other videos, but I am a student pilot for helicopters. Right now I'm gonna go up in the Sikorsky 76 C plus. I've never flown a fully articulating helicopter. I've only been flying Robinsons, R22s and R44. So I'm really interested to see what it's like to be in a turbine helicopter and uh, you know, one that has a fully articulating rotor system. So this is gonna be a really cool experience. I'm super pumped and be flying with the certified flight instructor. So he's gonna kind of walk me through some of the little stuff on flying these big aircrafts because this thing is at least 10 times the size of an R22. The R22s, imagine it like driving a, uh, like a Ford Fiesta or a Toyota Yaris. And this is like driving an Escalade limousine plus whatever you want to call or Maybach. You know, I mean, it's just, I mean, I'm going to show you around this thing so you can see the inside of it. So this, all right, so here's the cockpit. I mean, flight planners or flight computers. I mean, everything's digital. It's so unbelievably well put together. And then let's look at the cabin. 
So it's one, two, three, four, five, six people back here. Unbelievable. Look at that rotor system, so sweet. Check out the tail rotor. Oh man, that thing's huge. I feel like one of these rotor blades is the length of an R22's complete rotor system. It's unbelievably big. First impression flying a Sikorsky is completely different than a Robinson. A Robinson, they're so small and kind of squirrely, you really have to be on top of it. The Sikorsky, you can just hold a button and lock in your cyclic and collective controls so that it just holds that path. Not only that, but the sensitivity on the collective and pulling power is incredible. This thing can take off vertically like it's nobody's business, which is very difficult to do in a Robinson. You usually have to get a running head start and then pull back on the cyclic and then you go up and kind of take off. So great experience. I'd love to get more hours in a uh, turbine helicopter. It's just absolutely next level. Okay, you can see the uh, header gasket was bad. You can see how much black soot is everywhere. But this has all been replaced now. Has new gaskets in it. All right, you can see the uh, radiator blew out from the end tank from during the burnout. We're gonna replace it with a metal radiator, but uh, that ain't good. Wow. Hey, Parker. I know that we were eyeballing this off the park, off the uh, trailer. You got this uh, crazy wear pattern on the front here, but then if you actually look around to the back side of the rotor, you can see it is a factory rotor, rotor not some uh, China. That, um, we thought it was on there originally. And if you look real close, you can see the wear difference from the inside to the outside. So the caliper definitely has something wrong with it and it's applying more pressure to one side than the other. So we pulled the plugs out. This is a uh, you know, factory OEM plug. Looks like it's been replaced before. You can see the factory tune is uh, pretty hot right there. But you know, all things considered, looks pretty good. The compression was perfect. We saw 200 uh, PSI in all holes, plus or minus 5%. So uh, even though we have 175 on this bad boy, it's looking pretty good. If you guys like this content, subscribe, like, leave me a comment. I'm gonna be going to Phoenix this weekend for a CE course. And my buddy Sean and I are gonna be driving his Lambo on a scavenger hunt with a bunch of other exotics. So make sure you guys follow along. It's gonna be a sick weekend of teeth and turbos.